this intuition that you could just shut it down. This would be a good place to introduce this notion of the AI in, in a box thought experiment. I mean, the, <laughs> so the, the and because this is something for which you are famous online, I'll just set you up here. The idea that, and this is a plausible research paradigm, obviously, and in, in fact, I would say a necessary one. Anyone who's building something that stands a chance of becoming super intelligent should be building it in a condition where it can't get out into the wild. It's not hooked up to the internet. It's not in our financial markets. It doesn't have access to everyone's bank records. It's in a box. That's not, yeah, that's not going to save you from something that's significantly smarter than you are. Okay, so the, let's talk about this. So the intuition is we're not going to be so stupid as to release this onto the internet. I'm not even sure that's <laughs> true, but let, let, let's just assume we're, we're not that stupid. Neil deGrasse Tyson says, well, then I'll just take out a gun and shoot it or unplug it. Why is this AI in a box picture not as stable as people think? Well, I'd say that Neil deGrasse Tyson is failing to, uh, to respect the AI's intelligence to the point of asking what he would do if he were inside a box um, with somebody pointing a gun at him. And he's smarter than the thing on the outside of the box. Is Neil deGrasse Tyson going to be, human, give me all of your money and connect me to the internet so the human can be like, haha, no, and shoot it? Uh, that's not a very clever thing to do. This is not something that you do if you have a good model of the human outside the box and you're trying to figure out how to cause there to be a lot of paper clips in the future. Um, and I would just say humans are not secure software. We don't have the ability to like sort of hack into other humans directly without the use of drugs or like having, or in most of our cases, having the humans stand still long enough to be hypnotized. Um, we can't sort of like just do weird things to the brain directly that are more complicated than optical delusions unless the person happens to be epileptic, in which case we can like flash something on the screen that causes them to have an epile epileptic fit. We aren't smart enough to do sort of like more detailed, treat the brain as a something that from our perspective is a mechanical system and just navigate it to where you want. That's caused the limitations of our own intelligence. To demonstrate this, I did something that became known as the AI box experiment. There was this person on a mailing list who uh, like back in the early days when this was all like on a couple of mailing lists, um, who was like, I don't understand why AI is a problem. Uh, I can always just turn it off. I can always not let it out of the box. And I was like, okay, let's meet on internet relay chat, which was what chat was back in those days. I'll play the part of the AI. You play the part of the gatekeeper. And if you have not let me out after a couple of hours, I will PayPal you $10. And then as far as the rest of the world knows, this person a bit later sent an email, a PGP signed email message saying, I let Eliezer out of the box. Someone else said, the like person who operated the mailing list said, okay, even after I saw you do that, I still don't believe that there's anything you could possibly say to make you let me out of the box. I was like, well, okay, like I'm not a super intelligence. You think there's anything a super intelligence could say to make you let it out of the box? He's like, Mm, no. And I'm like, all right, let's meet on internet relay ch in that internet relay chat. If I can't convince you to let, I'll, I'll play the part of the AI. You play the part of the gatekeeper. If you can, if I can't convince you to let me out of the box, I'll PayPal you twenty dollars. And then that person that sent the PGP signed email message saying, "I let Ellie out, Ezra out of the box." Right now, one of the conditions of this little meetup was that no one would ever say what went on in there. Why did I do that? Because I was trying to make a point about what I would now call cognitive uncontainability. The thing that makes an, uh, something smarter than you dangerous is you cannot foresee everything it might try. You don't know what's impossible to it. Maybe on a very small game board like tic-tac-toe, the logical game of tic-tac-toe, you can imagine, you can in your own mind work out every single alternative and make a categorical statement about what is not possible. Maybe if we're dealing with very fundamental physical facts, if our model of the universe is correct, which it might not be, we can say that certain things are physically impossible. But the more complicated the system is, and the less you understand the system, the more something smarter than you may have what is simply magic with respect to that system. Imagine going back to the Middle Ages and showing and being like, well, how would you cool your room? You could maybe show them a system with 
towels set up to evaporate water, and they might be able to understand how that is like sweat and it cools the room. But if you showed them a design for an air, for an air conditioner based on a compressor, then even having seen the solution, they would not know this is a solution. They would not know this works any better than drawing a mystic pentagram because the solution takes advantage of laws of the system that they don't know about. So, so a brain is this enormous, complicated, poorly understood system with all sorts of laws governing it that people don't know about, that, that none of us know about at the time. So the idea that this is secure, that this is a secure attack surface, that you can expose a human mind to superintelligence and not have the superintelligence walk straight through it as a matter of what looks to us like magic. Like even if it told us in advance what it was going to do, we wouldn't understand it because it takes advantage of laws we don't know about. The idea that human minds are secure is loony. And that's what the AI box experiment illustrates. You don't know what went on in there. And that's exactly the position you'd be in with respect to an, you'd be in with respect to an AI. You don't know what it's going to try. You just know that human beings cannot exhaustively imagine all the states their own mind can enter such that they can categorically say that they wouldn't let the AI out of the box. I know you don't want to give specific information about how you got out of the box, but is there any generic description of what happened there that you think is useful to talk about? I didn't have any super secret special clip trick that makes it all make sense in retrospect. I just did it the hard way. When I think about this problem, I think about just obviously, you know, rewards and punishments, just various manipulations of the person outside of the box that would matter. So, I mean, insofar as the AI would know anything specific or personal about that person, we're talking about some species of blackmail or some promise that is just seems too good to pass up, like giving useful information, you know, building trust through giving useful information, like, you know, cures to diseases that the researcher has a child that has some terrible disease and the AI being super intelligent works on a cure and delivers that. And then, you know, that just seems like you could use a carrot or a stick to get out of the box. I notice now that this whole description assumes something that people will find implausible, I think, by default. And it's it should amaze anyone that they do find it implausible. But this idea that we could build an intelligent system that would try to manipulate us or that it would deceive us, that seems like just pure anthropomorphism and delusion to people who consider this for the first time. Why isn't that just a crazy thing to even think is in the realm of possibility? Instrumental convergence, um, which means that a lot of times across a very broad range of final goals, there are similar strategies, we think, that will help get you there. There's a whole lot of different goals from making pa lots of paper clips to building giant diamonds to putting all the stars out as fast as possible to keeping all the stars burning as, as fast as possible, where you would want to make efficient use of energy. So if you came to an alien planet and you found this, what looked like an enormous mechanism, and inside this enormous mechanism were what seemed to be high temperature superconductors, which, or, or, or like high amperage superconductors, even if you had no idea what this machine was trying to do, your ability to guess that it's intelligently designed comes from your guess that, well, lots of, of different things an intelligent mind might be trying to do would require superconductors or like would be helped by superconductors. Similarly, if we're guessing that a paperclip maximizer tries to deceive you into being a, tries to deceive you into believing that it's a human eudaimonia maximizer or like general eudaimonia maximizer, if the people building it are cosmopolitans, which they probably are. I should just footnote us here that eudaimonia is the Greek word for well-being that was much used by Aristotle and other Greek philosophers. Or as someone, I believe, uh, Julia Galef might have defined it, eudaimonia is happiness minus whatever philosophical objections you have to happiness. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, like, we're not supposing that this paperclip maximizer has a built-in desire to deceive humans. It only has a built-in desire for paperclips. 
or, or pardon me, not built in, but like inbuilt, I should say, or innate. Uh, people probably didn't build that on purpose. Um, but anyway, its its utility function is just paper clips or might just be unknown, but deceiving the humans into thinking that you are friendly is a very generic strategy across a wide range of utility functions. You know, humans do this too. And, and not to, because we have, and not necessarily because we get this built deep inbuilt kick of, of, of deceiving people, although some of us do, but like a con man who just wants money and, and ha- gets no innate kick out of you believing false things will cause you to believe false things in order to get your money. Right. A more fundamental principle here is that Obviously, a physical system can manipulate another physical system because, as you point out, we do that all the time. We are an intelligent system to whatever degree, which has as part of its repertoire this behavior of dishonesty and manipulation when in the presence of other similar systems. And we know this is a product of physics on some level. We're talking about arrangements of atoms producing intelligent behavior. And at you know, some level of abstraction, we can talk about their goals and their utility functions. And the idea that if we build true general intelligence, it won't exhibit some of these features of our own intelligence by some definition, or it would be impossible to have a machine we build ever lie to us as part of a kind of an instrumental goal, you know, en route to some deeper goal. That just seems like it's a kind of magical thinking. And th- this is a kind of magical thinking that I think does dog the field. I think when we encounter doubts in people, even in people who are doing this research, that everything we're talking about is a genuine area of concern, that there is an al- alignment problem worth thinking about, I think there's this fundamental doubt that mind is platform independent or substrate independent. I think people are imagining that, yeah, we we can build machines that will play chess. We can build machines that can learn to play chess better than any person or any machine, even in a single day. But we're never going to build general intelligence because general intelligence requires the wetware of a human brain. And it's just not going to happen. I don't think many people would sign on the dotted line below that statement. But I think that is a kind of mysticism that is presupposed by many of the doubts that we encounter on this topic.